At first, everything was fine, and then. And you think it's all of this fluid? Is uh, no fat in here? Well, I'm proud of you. And at this rate, you're gonna need extra skin even once soon. So once. Which one of my sister? Two hospital staff. I need somebody in my room immediately. I have been waiting. You know. So, to do uh, this. how are we gonna get her away from you? <laughs> Number 10. Samantha Mason Samantha Mason appeared on My 6 Around Live Season 9 Episode 1 in December 2020. She has been of particular interest to fans of the show ever since. Samantha's struggles had taken a dark turn and landed her in an abyss. Her weight was weighing her entire existence down, and its shadow was finally falling on her little daughter. Samantha feared that her obese would finally take her life and leave her daughter without a mom. The reason Samantha chose fetish eating as a career path was that she had limited options when it came to finding a job due to her size. She decided to give in and start a peculiar way of making money which included eating on camera for a website that catered to people who like larger women. Weighing close to 1,000 pounds left her struggling to move around her house. Using her stomach as a table, she was seen in one episode scoffing a whole cake for the cameras. Stripping to her bra on the show, Samantha admitted that she had a setup where she could film herself eating, and she ate for people. She just ate what she wanted, and the people paid for it as long as she filmed it. Samantha went on to explain that she gets sad and depressed, which leads to social isolation. However, her decision to appear on My 600 Pound Life didn't end up doing much good for her. As a result of her work, she piled on the pounds even more. <laughs> the size of the Titanic! You need to find a positive. <sighs> yelling at me! Then stop yelling at me! People are helping you. People want good. At first, everything was fine, and then it suddenly got worse. I'm so overwhelmed. Stop shoving food like that. She got caught in a vicious cycle of eating to survive and gaining weight because of it. She was left trapped. She had to adopt questionable means to an income. The job paid her bills and gave her confidence, but its negative impact on her health were bringing her closer to a health crisis. Upon entering the show, Samantha weighed more than 800 pounds as seen on the scale. However, she revealed that she had previously weighed 950 pounds. I found the perfect community to reinforce my worst habits, she said in a clip from the show. Throughout the episode, viewers saw Samantha work hard to shed pounds, as she revealed her food addiction began when she was about 5 to 6 years old. When she went through the worst trauma a child can go through as a result of her parents' divorce, she later dropped out of school at 17 years old and became pregnant with her daughter Bella. Either way, without the help of Dr. Now and the team over at My 600 Pound Life, Samantha was still able to lose around 320 pounds. You know, on bed rest. So this is a bad situation where you're just gonna gain more weight. You can survive long. And it sounds like your body is already given out. I've seen better days, but I'm doing okay, <laughs> relatively. So I see that you are still unhappy. And being in that bed all the time is not helping that. Okay, so what is your weight now? As of this morning, it was 940. So am I putting restrictions on your food to help you do that? But so far, that hasn't I know. So why are you getting more weight while you're in the hospital? Number 9. James King For a lot of fans of My 600 Pound Life, James King, referred to as James K during the show, arguably provided the defining moment for the entirety of the franchise's existence. Kentucky native King explained his childhood trauma during his first episode. Describing his mother as an absentee parent, he claimed that he only saw his mother three times during his childhood and she was drunk every time. This required his father to take care of him and his brother, Donald. He would reconnect with his mother later in life, but the scar of this early abandonment combined with his mother passing away on the same day that his family lost everything in a house fire 
apparently caused deep sadness to take over his life. Okay, I'm gonna prove it for you. Let's make a bet, okay? If she doesn't come visit you for you your leg is swollen because you gained a lot of weight. So it's getting bigger and worse. And you two are deluding, so what's going on? I've been having a lot of swelling. Where, in your leg? Or Legs anything? all over. A lot of weight again, and that's the problem. Okay, then where's the swelling coming from? Well, what, what, what I think swelling. And you think it's all of this fluid? Is there no fat in here? Come from thin air? James. Your weight is related to what you eat. Your weight is controlled by the food you take. Well, she ain't giving me no food. I think your weight has to do anything with your eating habit? No, I don't. So what do you think your weight... I just lost everything I had in a single day, he said during his episode. Depression set in and caused his weight to balloon, keeping him away from school and other social activities. By the time King appeared on the fifth episode of the fifth season of My 600 Pound Life in 2017, he was completely bedbound. He weighed in at 791 pounds during his initial appearance and he relied upon his wife, Lisa, and his children to keep his body clean and fed as he was unable to stand unassisted. He had developed ulcerations on his leg and multiple health problems, including having to use a CPAP machine at night. Throughout the episode, the show documented James' weight troubles making him unable to perform even the simplest tasks, like bathing, cared for by his children. What's worse is that he lost his mother seven months after their reconnection. Right after from the start of his journey, James King was depicted on the show as becoming argumentative when forced to follow Dr. Now's diet or exercise. He was frequently prone to cravings, which made sticking to the plan set before him difficult. The list of what ailed James King was a very long one. King had already experienced heart failure once, along with sepsis and cirrhosis of the liver, and the stress of the situation made him even more vulnerable to his cravings. Though Dr. Now placed him on an eating plan guaranteed to make him lose the 200 or so pounds he needed to drop to qualify for bariatric surgery, King's first episode ended in disappointment. He failed to make the weigh-in requirement, gaining weight instead of losing it. Tell him the same thing and you believe the same thing. Won't you f make somebody come watch me then? No. Let's see what happened. Oh. That gonna be hard for you? Well, I want to know why he didn't lose the weight the last time. Read this. And the illusion that your eating has nothing to do with your weight is totally... I have no trapeze. I'm laying on a Bed is flat. Look, I'm here to help you. You want to well, help me? You don't or not? show it. You're killing yourself and even you and not bringing any food. But that's not reality. James, there is no miracle in it. I keep her five days away from you. See how much would you going to lose? Why are you blaming it on her? Sure, there's no immediate issues. We will discharge you, and I wish you well, James. If you need that your weight gain is in magic or water, it's Lisa. Doctor, now look. Is that a deal? No. She's my wife. I've been okay. with her 20. James King appeared on the My 600 Pound Life spin off series, My 600 Pound Life Where Are They Now? in 2018. The episode continued to track his attempt at losing weight. But as it turned out, he packed on the pounds instead. By the end of the episode, he had gained more weight, peaking at 840 pounds while hospitalized and supposedly on a Dr. Now approved diet. On the show, Dr. Now had gone so far as to accuse Lisa King of overfeeding James on purpose by bringing in food from the outside world. Though she insisted she wasn't sneaking him anything, Dr. Now called Adult Protective Services after James gained weight. When they failed to intervene, he threatened to ban Lisa from the hospital, blaming her for the weight gain. He insisted that if Lisa was banned from the hospital, her husband would easily lose 30 to 50 pounds on his prescribed diet. When James refused to bar his wife from his bedside for five days, Dr. Now refused to accept his excuses. He was dropped from the doctor's program. Number 8. Justin McSwain At just 27 years old, Justin McSwain was struggling and didn't know how to get out of the jam he was in. He had gained nearly 400 pounds in just 4 years, putting him at 687 pounds. 
and because of his size, he could no longer go to an office and work. He had developed debilitating anxiety and agoraphobia and had all of his food delivered so he didn't have to go outside. Justin's addiction to food began as a child, when, following his parents' divorce, the youngster found it was hard to fit in with his father's new family. The constant tension at home led him to eating food as a therapy. By 14, McSwain was more than 200 pounds. He was living with his stepmother, who could padlock the food in the house and berate him for overeating. Justin had coped with his difficulty childhood and unstable mother using food, and the dependence spiraled into an addiction as he got older. He had moved to Texas with his father for the Doctor Now Weight Loss program, and the two bonded a lot over this period together. When Justin took the initiative and met with Doctor Now, he quickly began turning his life around. Great, especially seeing your weight loss. You lost 92 pounds in two months, not quite 100. But before we move ahead, you need to move down here to Houston. So get you on schedule as long as you continue to lose and stay on track, okay? Okay. But if he is made. But ultimately, to be successful in the long term, Justin is going to need to all right, keep losing like you are and stay on track. And I'll wait for you to get down to. A year after he adjusted his diet and underwent gastric bypass surgery, Justin had lost 334 pounds. It helped him break the shackles of his addiction, and he finally came into his own. He went on to make a success of himself. By 2019, he had begun taking flight lessons to earn his pilot's license, believing that not even the sky was the limit. Yeah. So that's almost loss of 200 pounds in a year. That's excellent. Well, I'm proud of you. And at this rate, you're going to need extra skin to move on soon. So one stop working weight loss patient I have ever had. And as long as he continues going to therapy. Justin was assigned to get at 250 pounds for the skin removal surgery. He managed to be there at 253 pounds and decided to go for the surgery. In the first surgery, they removed 45 inches of skin from the midsection of his torso and 30 inches of skin from his sides, amounting to removing 120 inches of Justin's skin line and suturing up close to 500 blood vessels. Justin was down to 241 pounds before his surgery, and after losing all that skin, his new weight was 224 pounds. The doctor tells him to lose another 20 pounds by this day, and sure enough, he'll do it. I don't think he's missed a number yet. Yeah, that's right. You gonna make him gassy, man? Hmm? 100 feet or so at a time. I can imagine with all that loose skin, it's not gonna help. No, it's like running with help to where you want to be. I've dealt with a lot of mental health challenges as well, and it really makes a difference. It's given me an opportunity to, to find new interests and new passions. Number 7. Brandy and Candy Dreyer On the show, Brandy and Candy Dreyer weighed in at 600 pounds each, leaving the 29-year-old sisters facing severe and life-threatening health issues. They were able to overcome their extremely difficult childhood, courtesy of My 600-Pound Life, and are one of the greatest success stories to come out of the show. Fans immediately felt for the twins when the Vancouver, Washington natives described the lack of support they had growing up, saying that they only had each other and food to get through it. The girls, who used food as a coping mechanism early on in life after facing abuse during their childhood, had been using food as a crutch. Their bodies had accumulated decades worth of fat and losing it was not going to be easy. Even though the two sisters wanted to get weight loss surgery, their insurance would not cover them. But after their friends sent a submission to TLC's hit show, the Vancouver sisters were picked to be on the series. At their initial weigh-in, Brandy weighed 587 pounds, while Candy weighed 604 pounds. The two sisters had a difficult way ahead, but were able to lift each other up during their journey. Um, and Brandy. You're 587 pounds. Candy and Brandy have created their own world where they can hide and go to food together to put you on a 1,200-calorie-a-day diet. So news that their heart may not be strong enough to survive the procedure. A little bit abnormal. Your heart is not pumping adequately. 
They describe their lives as miserable when they started on the show. But their difficult situation motivated them to lose weight and qualify for surgery. The sisters had to lose 50 pounds before their doctor, Dr. Yunan Nauzaradan, would approve them for surgery. They had to cut out unhealthy foods like soda and pizza. If they were going to change their lives, they had to part ways from old companions. After hard work, the girls were approved for bariatric surgery. While Brandy's surgery was a success, Candy suffered a pulmonary embolism and a heart attack on the operating table during weight loss surgery. She barely survived the operation after she was left in a week-long medically induced coma but recovered. Nonetheless, they both won against all the odds and transformed themselves through sheer grit. Candy and Brandy had one of the most dramatic changes from the start of their journey on My 600 Pound Live Season 5 to now. They've lost more than 400 pounds and were nearly unrecognizable to viewers. It's gonna be fine, but you never know. Which one my sister? She did some walking, she stopped breathing, and her heart stopped. Number 6 Isaac Martinez. One of the participants from Season 9 was Isaac Martinez, a 23-year-old who weighed 661 pounds at the initial weigh-in. He was a silent hero with a shy demeanor. He had always helped his family out but now was in need of help himself. His story was a heartwarming tale of self-sacrifice. At the age of 10, he became the caretaker of his siblings after his mom had a stroke, meaning he had to learn to cook for his family. Life wasn't easy from the start as he faced several issues that he was born with in life. He was born premature with complications and had been a sickly child. He was underweight as a young child as he was hypersensitive, which often meant he would have allergic reactions to food, which later stopped. However, once he turned 6, he became healthier and started to comfort eat and gained 100 pounds. He went through traumas like losing his grandmother, as well as their home, and moving in with his aunt. How many eggs do you want? Food has always been a comfort and like an escape from feeling of satisfaction. I feel good, I feel full, and I'm happy. With his weight, is being prisoner in his own body. He wants to go outside. It's unbearable, and I always knew I would be bigger, but I let it get so much worse. By the age of 16, Isaac weighed 450 pounds and managed to graduate before receiving a scholarship to study at Houston University. However, his mother was diagnosed with stage 3 uterine cancer, and he ended up dropping his scholarship and moving back home. Isaac took it upon himself to take care for the family, usually cooking for everyone. The trauma of losing all the promises he had been looking forward to led him to becoming depressed and he piled on the pounds. And it didn't stop there as Isaac was later diagnosed with cellulitis, which led to him going into a coma, before suffering a cardiac arrest when he was 22. When he visited Dr. Now, he gave Isaac 1,200 calorie daily diet to follow, as he was at a weight of 661 pounds. He then lost 122 pounds in a year and weighed in at 539 pounds at his last weigh-in, which he was told would take place in two months if he continued with his weight loss progress. It's harder to move and harder to breathe. Isaac? I'm here to make a change. I want to make a change for the better in my life. I want to lose the weight. And a normal range is around 18 to 24. And a person gets over 50 is... Yes, I live with my parents, with my family. Okay, so what do you do on a regular day? I'm eating day. Twice and then snacking in between. So you eat all day, really? I know that because I already had a moment where I thought I was going to die. And I was in the hospital for a week. And... Even at 23, your body is already starting to break down. So you don't have much time to waste. And Okay. Okay. You stick with the California calorie diet, you should be able to lose at least 80 pounds. Number 5. Steven Asante Steven Asante is definitely one of the more difficult subjects to appear on the show. Steven Asante's first appearance on the show in Season 5 was marked by him starting his journey at almost 800 pounds. 
Moreover, his attitude and reluctance to comply with the recommended diet regimens by Dr. Now appalled many in the audience. After several ups and downs and dramatic turns of events, including a period of drug addiction to painkillers, Stephen was born on December 2, 1981. He and his younger brother, Justin Asante, were born to an alcoholic mother. She separated from her husband when the boys were 11 and 5. The kids moved in with their mother, but suffered a lot of abuse caused by their mom's new boyfriend. They would find respite in binge eating and would often consider it as their means of coping with the trauma. Stephen developed a habit of eating and became greedy. According to his younger brother, he would eat everything before Justin. Stephen, too, agreed with what his brother said. He considered food his comfort through all the good and bad situations of his life. Regardless of this, eating could not help him deal with some issues already existing in his life. Stephen was constantly found cheating on a diet plan prescribed by the doctor. His younger brother revealed that Stephen had abused and tortured him as a child. Is casually asking for some pain medication, but his body language shows that he really wants to hospital staff. I need somebody in my room immediately. I have been waiting. And at this rate, we may be able to consider some skin removal for you. See, how's this? It's a lot more squishier and stuff. I think it was a lot larger um, when I first started. If you do any procedure like that, you have to keep up with your hygiene because it seems like you still need to investigate. Are you able to take a shower every day? Yeah, I try my best to stay. So you can be in the habit if we're going to consider surgery. But you're doing well overall, Kishan, are you? No, following doctor's orders. So. It only took a year and a half. Shut up. <laughs> Do psychotherapy. Okay. We will set an appointment for you. I'm cautiously optimistic right now. I say I'm going to have a report sent to me. The concern is that if Stephen wants to get painkillers, he will find a way. And if he tries to do anything, that he keeps going to psychotherapy because the addiction will always be there. The fans of the show were not happy seeing his behavior towards his father and brother. In one of the events, things became so bitter that Dr. Nauzaradan threatened to call the cops. Stephen misbehaved with the hospital staff and often threw tantrums. Some fans even claimed that he was mentally unfit to remain in the show and needed therapy. Stephen completed his sleeve surgery and went to rehab. He had lost an enormous amount of weight and was able to determine a seemingly proper path for himself. His progress, along with his brother Justin's, had been tracked across three follow-up episodes in 2018, 2019, and 2020. In the last follow-up episode on the Asante brothers, Steven tried to reconnect with Justin with hopes of redemption. Steven's limited post-surgery progress inspired Justin to go through with his own weight loss surgery. However, Steven had not made significant strides, and doctor now warned him that he might start gaining weight soon. Steven thereafter said, he was determined to lose weight and to stick to the diet designed by Dr. Now. He also said that he had met someone special named Stephanie and that he was relocating to Iowa to live with her and her daughter. Does that make any sense? No, you do. Okay, I get why Justin is upset. I'm I know, to... I'm gonna... No, 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 I'm gonna no, tell no. him. You need to come out of this role of being neutral. Listen to you from this point, he's on his own. Tell him he needs to come in. If you did this one more time, that's it. Didn't I? Yeah. And on top of that, we have a... This problem starts with your dad. In life, there is a... And want and get away with it. Yeah. But don't sit there and think by agreeing with me right now, you're supposed to be there, then this game is over for you. But even if you don't find anything, you wait that clean. If you want any chance to stay on this program, then you need to lose who are dependent on you. Mm. And if you don't change that, they won't change either. Because there are no... Don't help them. Yeah. Because they're both out of control. And, and in a society, if both of your kids to have a chance to outlive you, then you need to make these changes now. Number 4. Christina Phillips Contrary to what many people think, Christina Phillips wasn't the heaviest girl in the show. However, Phillips has made headlines because of her inspiring journey. Phillips' weight loss journey wasn't just something she wanted to do for the sake of the show. 
Phillips wanted to be healthier and live the life she had always wanted before. Before her stunning transformation, Phillips reportedly weighed more than 600 pounds. What's worse is the fact that she was only 22 years old at the time. Being so young, yet unhealthy, made Phillips feel insecure about herself. Seeing all these girls online, being their best versions, somehow urged Phillips to take a step forward and work on herself finally. Other than that, she had also shared that her weight significantly impacted her day-to-day -day life. Phillips stated that she struggled to do simple chores such as cleaning, washing, or even walking inside her house due to her overweight body. In an interview, she described herself as trapped. She also stated that she tended to freak out whenever she saw the scale go up. Considering the consequences it may give her, Phillips decided to stop eating for a few days, which was probably the most devastating part of her journey. She also revealed that although she started to diet and work out in hopes of losing weight, Phillips continued to struggle with anxiety over gaining her weight back. All this constant overthinking then started to affect her as well. The star was advised to get therapy to help her get mentally healthy. The transformation the fans of the show saw underwent gastric bypass surgery with Dr. Now, ultimately leading her to her desired body weight and appearance. I just worry about her so much. I got this. Me personally, I believe it's a calling from God to take care of somebody. I have to take care of Christina in the forms of cleaning her. She even goes to the bathroom, you know, I have to... Who bring you the food? Who does all the cooking? And so that become your permanent job to care for her? Yes. Yes, sir. That is her weight loss. <laughs> no, I don't... I'm... I guarantee you. I need to see you lose 30 pounds next month, get you in best shape for the, doing the surgery. During her initial consultation with Dr. Yunan Nazaradan, much known as Dr. Now, for Phillips to become an eligible candidate for gastric bypass surgery, she must lose weight by herself first. With much determination, she tried to stick to a diet and work out every day. Even though it was not easy on her part, she lost around 300 pounds a good amount before she could go through the life-changing surgery. Phillips was so excited when she received the news of her getting the surgery. It helped her shed another 200 pounds, which now led her to weigh around 185 pounds. Gain weight because you feel comfortable when you're eating. Now we haven't been able to cook. That part of your diet when you're 700 pounds. Now granted, they hand you all those uh, foods. You know, they so, don't able to uh, do this. How are we going to get her away from you? <laughs> Number 3. Nikki Webster Since My 600 Pound Live Show debuted in 2012, several people have obtained the doctor's guidance. Some of them found it tough to follow, while others emerged as extremely strong and determined in their approach. One such impressive patient was Nikki Webster, who appeared in the season 4 of the show. She was incredibly positive about her weight loss journey from the beginning and left her mark among fans as a memorable patient. Nikki Webster appeared in the fourth season of the show in 2016 as a 33-year-old woman weighing 650 pounds. Her eating habits affected every area of her life and had a detrimental impact on her health. She knew that if she didn't change, she would continue to be stuck in the same cycle. The consequences of staying the same could be very serious. The Lil Rock, Arkansas native faced a lot of issues because of her size, such as excruciating pain as soon as she woke up, difficulty cleaning her body, and moving up and down her home to get food. However, she did have a good job at the theater, working in a costume department, and was also able to drive around, which she mainly used for getting food for takeout stands. Nikki's determination to not give up on herself was an inspiration on my 600-pound life. She knew she had two options. She could either keep making excuses to justify overeating or she could put in the work. If she did, she'd prove to herself that she was capable of changing. It is important to know that Nikki faced problems with her weight since childhood and opted to diet whenever the scales moved up a notch. However, she can continue that for long. As a result, she would always gain back the weight, making her feel miserable, especially as a teenager. It slowly became a cycle as she sought to eat even more whenever she felt taunted and compared with her sisters. 
Nikki also had an issue with her two sisters, as she felt that her mother favored them over her, and her feeling of inadequacy increased even more with time. There were many times that I would talk to her about her eating habits. And I've asked myself so many times, what is the difference between enabling and help? And uh, that's, that's just... That's just heartbreaking. However, once Nikki began depending on and living with her parents because of her weight, the parents seemed like the enablers, as they catered to all her food requests without hesitation. This gave her food addiction a boost, with a variety of food being served to her throughout the day. Nevertheless, Nikki slowly realized how she was trapped in that body. She knew that her weight was debilitating and food was an addiction and it was killing her. Therefore, she made her way to doctor now in Houston, Texas, along with her father. After considering everything, Nikki was asked to follow Dr. Now's specific diet plan and lose 50 pounds to qualify for the surgery. Left with no choice, she followed the instructions well and soon got approved for gastric bypass surgery. Nikki kept her determination strong throughout her process, away from Dr. Now. But with the help of his diet and exercise plan, she took responsibility for her actions and stopped turning to food whenever she was stressed. She was eager to get her life back on track, to work, and to go about like a healthy person. One of her main goals to become healthier was to be able to take care of her brother Chris, who lived with cerebral palsy. This ultimately brought down her weight by 130 pounds. Even after the conclusion of her episode, Nikki continued with the diet plan and eventually lost an astounding 450 pounds. Nikki currently weighs 200 pounds. Her incredible results stem from her desire to improve her quality of life. She also wanted food to have less power over her. Pretty healthy, um, but coming home, I'll stop and dinner with my family. So your parents give you more food after eating all day her family they're helping kill her if they don't stop this five to six times a day some of that is enabled by her family number two randy statum when viewers first met him my 600 pound lives randy statum was on the verge of physical and emotional collapse like his fellow season four castmate gideon yeekly Randy's obesity placed an almost impossible strain on his family, but the man whose daughter once told him he was too fat to be a father has shed even more weight since this episode aired. And Randy looks amazing in his latest before and after pictures. As is the case with so many of my 600 pound lives participants, Randy's weight problem stemmed from his childhood. Typically though, Randy's early years were happy. He developed unhealthy eating habits in order to maintain a competitive athletic advantage. For as long as he could remember, he was bigger than everyone his age. He was athletic because his dad would coach a lot of the youth team sports, and he would tell him to eat as much as he wanted so he could get big and use that size on the field. Randy also explained that he felt some pressure to live up to his father's expectations, especially when they became his family and friends' expectations too. Everyone expected him to be this big guy, and that's what he was because he wanted his dad's approval and everyone's approval. He would just always eat because he wanted to do well, and the bigger he got, the better he could do. Randy took the wrong way of becoming an athlete and paid for it with his health. Randy's size grew in proportion to his age. He weighed 180 pounds by the start of 6th grade and 300 pounds by his high school graduation. Unfortunately. Randy's weight gain didn't stop there. By the time he married his first wife, Daniel, at the age of 26, Randy weighed 400 pounds. He reached his peak weight of 640 pounds by the time the camera started filming his My 600 Pound Life episode back in 2015. What do you snack on? Candy bars or stuff like that. So who buys them? Usually me. Uh, how many people? Eleven. 11 people, 11 total. how many of them are overweight? Uh, so it's going to be very hard for you to stick to a low-calorie diet if nobody else is eating for his own eating habits. Randy, let me tell you something. You're not too far from frequency of eating and type of food. So you got to have the handle on those two issues. You want to be there for your daughter? This is your chance. You think you can do it? Yes, sir. All right. 
It's not uncommon for my 600 pound life participants to put on weight at some point during their initial dieting. Randy was no exception. To his surprise, he gained 15 pounds over the course of an early month. But Dr. Nauzaradon helped Randy realize exactly how dire his situation had become. It's very simple, he told Randy. He was at the doctor's office with his father. Your heart is failing, and it could give out tomorrow, a week from now, or in three months. Weight loss, Dr. Nauzaradon said, was Randy's sole option. The only way to stop this is to lose weight so your heart gets strong again. You do that, you get surgery. If you don't, you're not going to be alive this time next year. If you want to live, lose the weight. Fortunately, Randy was listening. By the end of the episode, Randy had lost enough weight to be approved for a gastric bypass surgery, which in turn helped him shed further pounds. All told, Randy finished his episode weighing about 350 pounds, meaning he lost approximately 45% of his total body weight. But you need to slow down. I want you to slow your weight loss down to three to five and not taking his protein and he could be malnourished. And if we don't treat out of you, Randy had his ups and downs, but he has lost over 200 pounds. And now he is. I'm happy with your progress. I know it's just going to get better as I go. All right, I'll see y'all later. Number one, Brandon Scott. Since its premiere in 2012, the reality show has chronicled the journey of several individuals as they overcome various obstacles on their way to adopting a healthier lifestyle. While some go through a difficult period of battle to conquer these challenges, some have a relatively smoother journey due to several reasons. Brandon Scott from Season 7, Episode 7 was in the latter group, as his desire and determination to become healthy made his journey quite successful. When Brandon Scott appeared in Season 7, he was a 33-year-old who felt trapped in his body because he weighed 718 pounds. He lived in Columbus, Ohio with his girlfriend, Taylor, who helped him with his day-to-day -day activities and catered to his food requirements. For not being able to do anything himself and depending on Taylor for everything, he felt like he was in a nightmare where his body was a prison. I am ashamed at how out of control I have let my body get. I just see a monster, he said, regretting his eating habits and letting things get that bad. Brandon's food habits were deeply addictive and mostly stemmed from his difficult childhood. His parents constantly fought when he was young, thus he sought food to escape that feeling and find comfort. Soon he got addicted and started gaining weight. He became defensive about his size, even if the concern came from his mother. Yes. So you lost 141 pounds in two months, huh? Yes. It's high protein and low carb, and it's limited to 1,200 calories a day. And what I want you to do... Thus, they finally arrived at Houston, Texas, and met Dr. Now for professional assistance. Despite struggling with lymphedema, which is caused by a blockage in the lymphatic system, resulting in swelling of the arms and or legs, he was still able to get the surgery. Because of his lymphedema, he was asked to lose 120 pounds in two months to get approval for bariatric surgery. He was also assigned therapy with Lola Clay to get past the core issues which drove him to eat so much. While Brandon gets prop for getting through the rigorous process of losing weight, he had a pretty good support system. According to Looper, a big part of what made him lose so much weight so fast was his girlfriend at the time, Taylor Kunz. She was with him through it all and even decided to go on a diet with him. He had always felt he could not ask her to marry him due to his weight. Thus, after two months, Brandon lost a whopping 141 pounds, exceeding the given target. As he weighed 577 pounds, he was qualified for his surgery. Subsequently, Brandon underwent gastric bypass surgery and weighed 383 pounds by the end of his journey, losing 335 pounds. So you're down to 265 pounds today? Yes, sir. All right. So you lost over 450 pounds. Yes, sir. Almost twice as much as you weigh now. That's right. Something to look at, you know? Well, you know, you had some up and down, but you stay with the program, the healing process. Well, I'm uh, thinking about moving to Tennessee, to Nashville, the music city. Uh, so if you have to do that, uh, 
um, go ahead and uh, when you're ready for skin surgery, okay. for recovery for the skin surgery. Okay. Uh, so we can do that and make sure. He eventually proposed to the love of his life and they are now married and living in together in Nashville, Tennessee. That's all we have for you folks. Join us next time.